So to edit a rhythm, the first thing we need to do is to choose a rhythm to edit. All right, so we go rhythm style, choose whatever we want. What's 001? Funk 8 beat. That'll do. I'll engage a one touch preset. Just because it's far simpler, I don't have to go and turn on accompaniments and I know that I'm going to get about the right tempo for the style. So if we have a listen to that style, so okay, that's all good. What I want to do is revoice it, maybe take some parts out, do some panning. Select the rhythm editor button to take it into rhythm editor mode. We need to be able to hear it, obviously. I'm not going to play a chord yet because I just want to start with the drum part. And if I've got too much going on, it makes it very hard to hear um, my changes. You know. So I'm starting with the drum part. So the important buttons here are your part select. See that one? So that determines which part we're going to change. And the function button, which is right there. All changes in the end, all the changes are made using your plus and minus buttons, but to access the parts and the things that we want to change, we're going to use part select and function. So we're in rhythm editor mode. You'll notice that there are tracks one, three, five, and six in play in this particular style. Right, you can have up to eight tracks in any given style, but in this case, we've only got one, two, three, four that have actually been recorded for this style. So we don't worry about trying to edit blank tracks because there's nothing on them anyway. All right, by pressing the function, it takes us through the things we can actually change. Right, so firstly, the first thing we can change is the drum part. We can make it either on or off. We don't have to have a drum part. Now, if I turn it off, then we're not going to be able to change anything about it, so obviously I'll leave it on. Press function again, it tells me I can change the tone. To make the change, I'll just hit plus. So it's now scrolling through the different drum kits that I can use. Matrix set. Function again. Takes me to volume. I'm going to give it a little bit more volume. I'm actually ramp it right up for this one. Function again. Pan. I always like to pan when I've got multi tracks recorded. So you would know it just gives a bit more placement, gives it a bit more width, it makes it sound more musical at the end of the day. It takes that kind of mono block effect away too. When you're dealing with an instrument where the speakers are very close like this, the further apart you can make the instrument sound, the better. I don't like to pan things all the way to one side, you still like to have a little bit of stereo aspect, they're all stereo samples. So if you pan them too far, you're going to lose that effect altogether. Function. Reverb. You can hear that? Yep. Function again. Chorus. Chorus will only work provided you haven't panned all the way to one side. Because the way it works is it actually takes the two stereo aspects of the sample and detunes them slightly. If you've panned all the way over, you're not going to hear it at all. So I'm not going to add any chorus to that. Just listening to that now, I think it's too much reverb. So I can keep pressing function until I come back to that. Reverb, see it's just like a revolving door, it just keeps scrolling through those functions. And I'm going to pull that reverb down. That's better, much cleaner. Alright, so that's the drum part, I'm done with that. Using the part select button, we can then move on to the next part. And you'll notice that as soon as I hit it, it moves to part two. We know there's nothing on part two. So we go immediately to part three. And it tells us in the screen it's the bass part. In order to hear it, I have to play a chord. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back to that drum part and I'm going to temporarily turn it off just so that I can hear the other parts. And I'll come back later and turn that drum part back on. Alright, so the first thing is the tone. I don't like the tone, so let's scroll through the tones. Synth bass. Give it a bit more volume. And because I've panned the drums to the left, I'm going to pan the bass part slightly over to the right. So that's the next function. So I pan 55 
55 to the left, so I'll go 55 to the right with the bass part. So left would be the left button, right would be the right button. Function. I don't want any reverb at all on the bass part. But I do want a little bit of chorus. You can hear that. And that's it. I'm happy with that. So I can now move on to my next part. Before I do that, again I'm going to switch off my bass part now so I can hear the remaining parts. Part select again to move on to part 5 is the next available part. If you're not sure of what you're listening to, if you've got more than one part, just quickly turn it off so we can identify it. Okay, function, tone. And then the last thing left to do is just to go back and turn back on the parts that I've turned off. So again, part select. Take us back to the drum part. Hit the function button until so we see part. Hit plus for on. Move part select to part three. Turn the bass part back on. Part select to part five. We already left that on so we don't have to do it. Right, so that's our altered style. When I'm done, just turn the rhythm editor off by hitting rhythm editor again and it'll automatically say, do you want to save? Question mark means it needs a yes or a no. Yes, I do want to save. There are 200 preset rhythm styles in this model, so it will automatically select position 201. 201 is flashing. The reason that is, is I might have already saved something in 201 and I might want to advance it to say 203. So we select the position we want to save it in and if it's flashing, what do I need to do? Yes. Actually enter here. Yes is for a question mark. It's asking you now, are you sure? Question mark. Yes. So that's now call it completed. So if I compare what I've now recorded to the original, which was rhythm style done by one, original, 201, much better.